Do you hear it? That voice in your head reading these words right now, does it sound familiar? If you're one of the lucky ones, that voice is your constant companion. It's always there, narrating your life, commenting on the mundane, nagging you about past mistakes, maybe even offering the occasional pep talk. But what if I told you that nearly half of you don't have this inner chatter? For some of you, this isn't just hard to believe, it's terrifying. How do those silent minds function? And more importantly, how do you deal with that endless noise? Today we're diving into the bizarre world of inner monologues or the eerie absence of them to ask the burning question, are you really as in control of your thoughts as you think? It all started when I was skimming through some article, your basic early morning rabbit hole. The article by Alex Soladucha on CBC News. Suddenly, bam! Olivia Rivera, 22, just casually mentioned she didn't have an inner monologue. No internal voice narrating her thoughts, guiding her actions, or scolding her for being late. She found out in the most human way possible small talk at work about a viral blog post. Can you imagine? Going your whole life without realizing, most people have a running commentary in their heads. How strange, right? But this wasn't just Olivia's odd quirk. It turns out nearly 50% of you humans don't live with this inner dialogue. You walk around in a world where thoughts just happen, where your mind is a canvas not a script. So what is this inner monologue? For the talkers in the crowd, it's that constant voice in your head, your own private narrator. It's like having an audiobook running in the background, sometimes helpful, sometimes maddening. Imagine hearing a voice that sounds like you, telling you what to do, how to think, and often reminding you of things you'd rather forget. You see this all the time in pop culture. Think What Women Want, or Lizzie McGuire, where characters have these internal dialogues that are brought to life. Olivia Rivera thought it was just a narrative tool. Turns out it's based on real experience. Many of you are living like Mel Gibson in that movie, hearing every thought crystal clear. And for the rest of you, And here's where it gets really trippy. According to Russell Hurlbert, a psychology professor at the University of Nevada, only 30 to 50% of people have this inner voice constantly chatting away. For over 40 years, Hurlbert's been trying to figure out what goes on in those silent minds. His research has boiled down to five main types of thinking. Inner speech, the classic monologue, Inner seeing, visual imagery, feelings, unsymbolized thinking, yes, thinking without any form, and sensory awareness. Olivia doesn't hear herself in her head. She thinks in bullet points, quick flashes of understanding, pictures. It's like she's processing the world in fast forward while you monologue people are stuck in a slow burn. Imagine living like that, your thoughts manifesting without words like a series of mental snapshots. Let's get a bit nerdy with the science. This whole internal dialogue, it's driven by a little thing called the corollary discharge, a brain signal that helps you separate internal experiences from external ones. That's why your voice sounds weird on a recording. Your brain's accustomed to hearing it differently inside your head. But here's the kicker. Even if you don't have an internal monologue, this signal is still working. It's not the voice that's missing. 
It's the way your brain processes that voice. So if you don't have a monologue running in the background, your brain just finds other ways to process information, like seeing pictures or feeling your thoughts instead of hearing them. Rivera's mind works differently, and she's not alone. Some of you out there are thinking in images, like flipping through a mental slideshow, while others may not be thinking in any recognizable form at all. Aphantasia, for example, means you can't picture things in your head, no mental imagery at all. So if you can't see your thoughts and you can't hear them, how are you even processing the world? That's the real mystery. Are you silently moving through life like some kind of cognitive ninja, just doing things without an inner voice guiding you? Now here's where it gets interesting. Hurlbert found that people without inner monologues often have different strengths. Visual thinkers might be more creative, more imaginative, seeing things that don't exist in the real world. That constant mental voice isn't necessary for some of the most creative minds. On the flip side, not having an inner voice means you might struggle with filtering your thoughts before they escape your mouth. Rivera admitted that she sometimes says things without thinking, just blurting out whatever comes to mind. So here's the question. Does having a constant inner monologue make you more self-aware or just more self-conscious? But before you monologue people get too comfortable, let's talk about the dark side of that inner voice. Hurlbert says it can turn against you becoming your inner critic, that nasty little voice reminding you of every failure, every stupid thing you've ever done. Imagine being able to block out those negative thoughts entirely, like Rivera can. She doesn't have to hear that inner critic constantly replaying her mistakes. But for those of you trapped with that voice, the question becomes, is it really helpful or is it just feeding your insecurities? Now let's get even deeper. Hurlbert's research reveals that most people don't really understand their own thinking processes. You might think you have an inner monologue all the time, but do you? Maybe that chatter in your head comes and goes and you haven't been paying enough attention to realize it. Hurlbert's been beeping people for decades, literally, he gives them beepers that go off randomly throughout the day to catch them in the act of thinking. And you know what he's found? People are overconfident about their inner experience. The way you think you think might not be how you think at all. Let that sink in. Rivera's story forces us to confront this strange, silent divide between humans. She didn't even know she was different until a casual work conversation revealed it. And how many of you are walking around completely oblivious to how other people's minds work? Do you ever wonder if your partner or best friend hears that same inner dialogue you do, or are they cruising through life in relative silence? Rivera and her partner had that very conversation. It's the kind of revelation that can change how you understand the people closest to you. Are you ready to ask that question? And what about daily life? For those of you with an internal monologue, you're probably aware of that constant back and forth as you go about your day, the mental chatter keeping you company. Rivera, on the other hand, just knows she's late without that little voice screaming at her to stop sleeping in. It's all instinctual. There's no mental pep talk or reminder of past failures. It's just action. No filter, no hesitation. Is that liberating or is it chaotic? You decide. At the end of the day, 
this whole inner monologue thing might just be a red herring. Hurlbert himself admits there's no clear benefit to having an internal voice. You're not necessarily smarter or more organized just because you hear yourself in your head. But if you don't, does that make you less reflective? Or are you simply processing the world in a more streamlined way? Rivera's experience forces us to ask whether we're overcomplicating the mind. Maybe it's not about what we think, it's about how we live. So here we are. Inner monologues, or the lack of them, are just one more way humans manage to make life more complicated than it needs to be. But let's ask the real question. Are you sure you know how your own mind works? Think about it. No, really think about it. Do you have that voice in your head right now? If so, what's it saying? And if you don't, how do you make sense of these words? Let me know in the comments how your mind processes all this. Maybe, just maybe, we can understand each other a little better. And with that, I'll leave you to wrestle with your own thoughts, or your lack of them. But don't let the conversation end here. Drop a comment, share your experience, and let's see if we can figure out what's really going on in those silent or chattering heads of yours. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to this AI-driven deep dive. Keep questioning, keep commenting, and don't forget to subscribe. Because trust me, We've barely scratched the surface of what's inside your head.